Okay, today's all about doing a little work on the Argo Frontier 650, trying to get it ready for uh, winter. <clears throat> and uh, this is not a machine that you put away for the winter, it's a machine that you play with in the winter time. So uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to put uh, axle extensions on, get it ready for my tracks. Uh, we're going to put a windshield on it. And possibly, if we have time, we're going to put the boat mount on the back for the boat motor. Uh, I know that's a summer deal, but we're going to put it on because it's something that stays on when you put it on. And uh, we just picked it up, and I'm kind of excited about it because we like to do a lot of fishing with it. Uh, anyway, here's the Frontier 650. we got it set up on a block here. Lifting my rear axle into the air. You don't really need a jack to do this. You just need a couple of guys <clears throat> and a good plank. And I actually prefer it to a jack because uh, it's a little safer. You don't have to worry about it falling off a jack. Uh, a couple of ramps in place. You can see that the back wheels are really up in the air there and ready to change over. What we'll do is we'll uh, do the back first. And then we'll put some weight in the back end, lift the front in the air. That'll put the front wheels up in the air and we can do the front. Then we'll remove the ramps, drive the, the Argo up on top of this beam here, and uh, that'll free up the center wheels and we'll do them. No jack involved. Uh, safe way to do it. Not worried about anything falling off. Uh, not worried about people getting hurt. It's, uh, it's really a safe way of doing these things. So uh, anyway, we're going to get started at it. First thing I'm going to do is remove the back wheels. And uh, once we get the back wheels removed, we're going to put on the extensions, uh, put the put the spacers on, put the wheels back on. It's a pretty simple process. So uh, I'll get the impact gun and we'll take off the rear wheels. Okay, so what you're going to need for this is a 19 millimeter deep socket uh, and uh, a good impact gun or a good strong bar. Impact gun works better because a strong bar you could actually turn the wheels if your brakes are worn. Or, uh, if you're by yourself, you got no one to hold the machine. Best to use an impact gun if you've got the use of one. If not, some tool shops will rent tools. This is an electric impact gun. You don't need a compressor. You just plug it in, and you're good to go. We're in Canada, so we got 19 mil. We're in the metric system. This is a Canadian-made film. So we take this off. Quite a simple process. together. Especially for me, I'm working outside. I'm in the grass. You could lose these. Keep them together. Wheel comes off quite easily. Put that aside. Here's your hub. Got a little grass here from Summer Adventures. I'm going to clean that off while it's off. It doesn't take long. It's clean. Good opportunity to grease it. You can see your grease nipple. Get her greased good. We got a hole through here so we can grease through the hub. The older machines don't. So it's a good opportunity to get your greasing done. I'll get the extensions and show you how they go on. Okay, so I got the extensions here. Basically, this is what they look like. They're a long shaft. They're threaded on the inside, threaded on the outside. They go over top of your wheel nuts here, your, your uh, lugs. Uh, when they go over top of this, the best thing I like to do, these you gotta remember, these are gonna be on all winter. And you gotta Put a little grease on these threads so in the springtime if you plan on taking them off they're not going to be seized on and break a stud okay now the myth to this is you put these on you got grease in there they'll back off that's not so and i'll show you why when i put the spacer on okay just just uh bear with me while i, while I put a little grease on these and uh doesn't take long a little bit not a lot on each one, just enough to go over the threads. When the nut goes on, it will spread that grease around. So there it is. You just take your wheel extensions and thread them on. Make sure they thread on fairly easy. You don't want to go on cross threaded. And you're going to put them all the way in. Okay, some of these will start in and they'll bind a bit, but it could be because of your uh, your wheel nuts through the summer getting dirt on them. 
And we didn't take a wire brush and clean these threads, we just took them off. So, I'll put these on real quick. And I'm going to get a wrench and I'm going to tighten these down. And then I'm going to show you how to line them up, which will, uh, you'll see what I mean by the can't back off. I'm going to go get a wrench now and put these all on. Okay, so we got the wheel studs in place, the axle extensions in here, they're all in. And what we're going to do is, when I put these on, I used a, a 5 8 wrench that fits perfect. Uh, 19 mil or 5 8 are pretty close to the same thing, so if you're on the standard system, 5 8 is probably what you're going to be looking for for your wheel nuts and your axle extensions. Uh, here's your wheel nut. Uh, actually, no, 5 8 won't fit your wheel nut. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, you probably want an 11 16 for your wheel nut. 5 8 works good on the extensions. You put these extensions on, don't torque them right down. They're just, they're on. That's it. Okay, the reason for that is you have to adjust them. Okay, when you get them adjusted, your spacer will slide on quite easily. You may need a hammer to tap it a bit, but it's uh, what you need to do is you need to take a look at your axle extensions. And as they fit in the hole, they have two sides to them. And those two sides are going to fit down these grooves. And if they're turned a bit, they're going to drag. So you need to take your wrench and just, oops, sorry, hold my camera too. Just give it a little, little turn the other way, just to adjust it so that it fits good. And when you get a good fit, this will slide on quite easily. And these will not back off because these sides are holding it in place. They can't back off. And that's where the myth comes in, where the grease will let them back off. It can't happen as long as you've got that spacer on there. They don't have to be tight. They just have to be snugged up and adjusted. Over tighten them, you're going to bust something. Okay? This will work excellent when you're out in the snow, out in the wintertime. They're, they're in as far as they're going to go when you snug them up. And all you're doing is loosening them a hair, just enough to adjust to fit in these grooves. And trust me, this is the best way to adjust your studs. And you won't have any problems with, uh, with them coming off. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust each one of these, put the spacer on, and we'll be ready to put the wheel on. Okay, so I've got the spacer in place. I've made the necessary adjustments and I've pushed it on by hand this far. So what I'm going to do Take a hammer, just tap in between these, and make sure it's on as far as it's going to go. The wheel goes back on, we tighten up the studs, we're good to go. What I might do with this is just maybe another little, come on, have a little touch of grease on the extensions because they will be here all winter long. And when it comes spring, you bust one of these babies off trying to get it off of there, and it can be expensive. It's not a big price, but you're looking at five, six bucks for a stud, another three bucks for a wheel nut, ten bucks for each stud. You bust three or four off, you're looking at forty bucks. So, here we go. Now, with these things, sorry, with these things, I did something wrong here. You gotta make sure the wheel is. lined up. Ah. Make sure your hole's lined up there. There's a hole for us in our rims. Make sure that hole's lined up with your, your hole as you go. So you can get your grease fitting through later. The wheel nuts go on. Make sure the wheel nuts go on easy. If there's any non-fitting, go on hard. Take it off, put it on another wheel nut, a lug nut, and uh, try it there. I got one that doesn't want to fit at all here. Not too happy with that. That one's going good. I'll try this on a few. I don't find one that fits. It'll be uh, 
There we go. Funny how they'll do that. Never force anything. Sometimes it's a little dirt. Sometimes it's going cross threaded. You don't want to cross thread. And you know they're going on good. Tighten them up. That's it in a nutshell. We're going to do that with uh, all six tires. And uh, when they're done, you can see they come out a little farther. And this allows the space inside for your track so it doesn't rub against the tub. And uh, we'll get these done and we'll be, we'll be ready for a windshield install. So uh, stay tuned. Okay, so we got the axle extensions on. Uh, I've worked at all, all six wheels. They're all lined up pretty good. And while I uh, had the uh, front wheels off, I put my brackets on for my plow. That's uh, on another video, Argo Plow Install, that I've got posted. If you want to check it out, it'll tell you how to build the plow and uh, put it on the machine. Um, so I guess that's it for this video on how to install axle extensions and uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope it was helpful. That's the whole goal of uh, the whole goal of making videos like this to teach people a little do-it-yourself and, and uh, make it a little easier for them to get ready for winter. So uh, until next time, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video and Thanks for watching. Have a good day.